In this lesson, we're going to add the code necessary to move the player. So here I am in my player scene. On the left hand side here in my scene tree, I've clicked on player and I'm going to click on this little icon here to add a node script. I'm going to leave everything as default. It's going to be called player.gd and then click on create. Now these gray lines of code, these are just comments. Anything with the pound sign or hash symbol, these are just comments. So I can get rid of these. You can also see I've got this function called underscore ready. I'm not going to use that. So I can actually get rid of all of this. I have to leave this line in here though. This says extends kinematic body 2D. And if you recall, our player node was a kinematic body 2D. And what we're doing is we're adding more lines of code. We're extending the default code that the Godot developers have actually added to this particular class, this node. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a variable for the player speed. And we can do that with the keyword var and then speed. I'm going to set that equal to 200. Now the next thing I'm going to do is call up a function and underscore. I'm going to type in the word physics. And as soon as I do that, it comes up with physics process and then brackets delta. We can finish with a colon there and press enter. Now the first thing I want to do is to give my player a direction. And in technical terms, what we call that is velocity. So var velocity equals and if you think in back to school, you would give it an X direction and a Y direction, and that's called a vector. So for moving from one point to another would have an X component, the horizontal movement. It has a Y component, the vertical movement, and that is a vector. And we call it a vector two. And in brackets, we would pass along both those horizontal and vertical components. So it might be two comma three, for instance. Now I'm going to leave that blank and we're going to set that in a second. Now what I want to do here is to check for input. So if we have some input from the keyboard, so if the input dot and I'll type in the word is, it gives us lots of options here. And the one I want is action pressed. So if the input is action press, if I press the key on my keyboard, and then in the brackets, I say, well, which key am I pressing? And if I scroll down here, I'm going to go for the UI right one. So if I have pressed the right arrow key, I'll press a colon here. And this indentation is really important in GD script. So if you notice the function is here, finishing with a colon, we then indent to set the velocity. That's the direction. We've got this checked. If there's an input, that input is action pressed UI right. So have I pressed the right arrow key? Then what do I want to do if we press this right arrow key? And what I want to do is to change the direction. And I want to change the horizontal direction. That's the X component of this velocity. So all I need to do here is say velocity and we put dot X. So the X component of the velocity is going to be equal to one. Now I can do the same thing again for if I press the left arrow key. So if the input dot is action pressed. Now be careful here. You want to make sure you get the right one. It's not just pressed or just released. It's action pressed. And then in brackets, it's UI left. I need a colon on the end. And what do I want to do this time? Well, again, the left arrow key is moving me to the left. So the velocity, and it's still dot X, it's still the horizontal, is equal to minus one. Now I want to do the same thing for the Y direction. 
So rather than type all this again, I'm just going to copy all of this, Command C. Make sure you get your indent correct. So pass over to here, press Command V or Control V. So if the input is action pressed, instead of UI right, I'm gonna go for UI down. And instead of velocity.x, it's going to be velocity.y. Now you might be thinking, well, if I think back to school and I have my x and my y, the y direction going down was negative. Now in game engines, it's a little bit different. The down direction is positive and the up direction is negative. So UI down is velocity y equals one. And if the input is UI up, we'll change that to up. This is going to be velocity dot y is equal to negative one. Okay, so that seems to take care of all the buttons that we're pressing the keys on the keyboard, left, right, up and down. And you might be thinking, okay, well now I should be able to move my player. Well, if you go and do a preview and you move your arrow keys, nothing happens. So what we've done, we've written the code to say, well, this is what I want to happen, but now I need to actually move the player. And we do that with an inbuilt method. So if you recall on our kinematic body 2D, if I hold down my command or control key and click, it will open up all the different methods and properties that are available to me. Um, we've just done a vector two, and there are a couple of options here. One's called move and collide, and this one's called move and slide. And that's the one we're going to use, move and slide. So back to my script, and all I need to do in here is say move and slide, but I need to pass in a velocity. See here in the brackets, it says linear velocity of type vector two. Well, we've got that, that's just our velocity. So I'll type in here, velocity. And now I can click on play. Now, if I click on my right arrow key, hopefully you can see it is moving really, really slowly. So what I need to do is multiply my velocity by my speed. So in brackets here, I'm going to do velocity and we're just going to multiply that by the speed. Now I can play. And now when I use my right arrow key, that's actually moving left and right, up and down. I can even go diagonally. But what you might notice is that diagonal movement is a lot faster than the vertical and horizontal movement. So we can take care of that. I'll explain why the player moves faster diagonally in the next video, but just let's very quickly take care of it. So what I say is that the velocity, we set that equal to the velocity and dot normalized. And that's a little method that we call upon to adjust that speed in the direction of the diagonal. And let's play that. And then we can go, we can go right, we can go diagonally. And there you can see we are moving at the same speed, no matter which direction we move up, down, left or right, or diagonal.